There's a reason why I don't wear dark jumpers on camera, because look at this. Look how white I am. I should probably adjust that on my camera settings to make myself look a bit more tanned, but it's authentic, it's raw, it's real. And that's what we're all about here, the morning Bible. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's video. Uh, it's good to have you here. We are going to be jumping straight into it. Um, we are in Luke chapter 3. We're going from verse 23 today. Um, so what's happened thus far? Well, Jesus and John, uh, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, Son of God. Um, Jesus is coming to save all of humanity. John is preparing the way for him. Yesterday we looked at, I say yesterday, I actually recorded it five minutes ago. Yesterday we looked at John uh, preparing the wilderness, um, telling all of the people who are suffering or people who are causing suffering that they should make their paths straight. Um, or that, well, God is coming to make their paths straight. Um, and what they need to do is turn away from their corrupt ways and turn and follow him. Uh, stop extorting people, stop bribing people, follow God. Um, and then right at the end of the passage, Jesus gets baptized. The Holy Spirit, which is, you know, part of God, he's a trinity. Holy Spirit is one of those three parts of God. Holy Spirit comes down like a dove and God says, this is my son. You know, with him I am well pleased. Um, and so we get one last little passage which introduces um, Jesus before we kick off with uh, his ministry. Um, and this is a really interesting passage because it's one that a lot of people would choose to skip over and it's the genealogy. So what on earth is a genealogy? Um, it essentially means it's their family tree. But it's not the family tree of all of the roots of the family tree, it's just this specific line. We are tracing this genealogy to specific people. Um, and so Jesus' genealogy specifically, um, it goes to David. They like to, the writers like to trace Jesus' genealogy back to David because David is a very important figure. Um, he was a king in the Old Testament. Um, some of you will know the story of David and Goliath where there was a big giant and David the tiny little guy, but he prayed to God, put a stone in his slingshot, hit Goliath right in the head, defeated Goliath. Um, and David goes on to become a king, write tons of poems sort of dedicated to God called the Psalms. Um, he also commits adultery and is a bit dodgy like that, but everyone in the Bible falls at some point except for Jesus, which is pretty cool. Um, we have someone to follow. Um, so yeah, so it traces the genealogy through David. Um, there are actually two genealogies. Um, in the Gospels. So I talked about the Gospels before. Those are the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John um, and essentially they are the stories of Jesus' life um, and there are genealogies in Matthew and in Luke. And so we're looking at the one in Luke, there's another one in Matthew. Um, sorry, I'm talking a lot before this passage because it needs a bit of preamble. Um, the reason why I thought that was particularly interesting was because I didn't realise this until today but Matthew's genealogy and Luke's genealogy are different to one another and there are a couple of key differences in them but I'll explain those as we go through. So be warned, I'm going to be saying a lot of names right now and there's not a whole lot of story in this passage, it's just name, 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 name. But where I can, I'm going to explain a few of the key names to you so you can understand why it is that we've got this genealogy here, why this is important. Um, so yeah, let's kick off. I'll skip through the ones that um, I don't know too much about. Um, I'm sure they're all relevant at some point, and I apologise already for my pronunciation because I'm going to get a lot of these names wrong. Um, Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years of age, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph. So in brackets it says, as was supposed. Um, essentially by that Luke is just emphasizing the virgin birth like Joseph isn't actually Jesus's biological father um, but he is the supposed father people in the area say Joseph is the father um, he acts as Jesus's sort of earthly father raising him doing all that kind of thing and so in many senses he is Jesus's father in the same ways that um, you know an adopted father is the father of someone um, you know it's still still a parent um, but it's, you know, Luke is just pointing out, he's like, no, this was a virgin birth, he isn't a biological father, but he was the father. Um, and so then we trace Joseph's genealogy back through history. So let's go. Um, the son of Heli. So immediately we come up with the difference between Matthew's genealogy and Luke's one, because Matthew says that Joseph's dad was called Jacob. Um, so one of the 
biggest theories around this is essentially that Joseph um, had two fathers throughout his life. One of these would be his biological father and the other one would be um, his second father, someone who family he was adopted into, someone whose family he potentially married into, it could be Mary's father who then says Joseph is like a son to us, we don't really know. But essentially it shows that Joseph wasn't from this perfect sort of nuclear family home. It shows that, you know, he had, there was, there was um, disruption in his parents at some point. Um, son of Heli, son of uh, Matat, son of Levi, son of Melchi, son of Janai, the son of Joseph, another Joseph, son of Mattathias, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Esli, son of Nagai, son of Marth, son of Mattathias, another Mattathias, son of Semain, son of Josek, son of Joda, sounds like Yoda, the son of Joanan, the son of Rasa, the son of Zerubbabel, um, Zerubbabel was a key figure in the temple in the Old Testament, but that's a whole story we won't get into, um, Son of Shealtiel, son of Neri, son of Melchi, son of Adi, son of Kosam, son of Elmadan, son of Ur, son of Joshua, son of Eliezer, son of Joram, son of Mathat, another one, uh, son of Levi, another one, son of Simeon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of Jonam, son of Eliakim, son of Melia, son of Mena, son of Mattatha, son of Nathan, son of David. So, son of Nathan, son of David, this is important because this is the David we're talking about, this is the King David. Um, but Nathan, this is the key point in this. Nathan was one of David's lesser known sons. The genealogy of Matthew differs from Luke's one in a lot of the names we just read out. And the reason for that is because in Matthew's genealogy, he follows uh, David's uh, royal line. So he follows through one of David's different sons and says the family tree goes like this. And Luke says the family tree goes like this. And on the surface that seems like an inconsistency, and it seems like um, the two accounts kind of disqualify one another. But then you quickly realise that like no family trees do this, where there'll be a branch that goes here and a branch that goes here, but eventually those branches will converge again, especially in a society like um, Jewish society back in the day. Um, people were marrying within their tribes, um, and so it's entirely possible for the two lines to go like this and converge. Matthew's line follows the royal line, where the kingship was passed on to Solomon from David, whereas Luke chooses to follow Nathan, one of the lesser known sons, and trace through the non-royal line and show us this. So essentially, two genealogies actually give us a more complete view of um, Jesus's lineage than other accounts do, which is quite cool. Um, where did I get up to? So Nathan, so David. So David was the son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz. Boaz is a cool figure. Um, if you want to have like a little fun bit of Bible reading, go and read the book of Ruth. It's in the Old Testament. Um, that has Boaz in it. Essentially, it's the story of um, this uh, young lady who is a refugee. Um, she is with her mother-in-law and they have nowhere to go, nowhere to live, and they're dirt poor. And they arrive in this town and um, Boaz takes her in, he gives her work, he gives her food, he supports both of them, and eventually he marries Ruth. And it's this really lovely story of, um, you know, it's in many ways a metaphor for God's grace and God welcoming us in. And you really see God acting through Boaz in his marriage with Ruth, and then that family line produces David and, you know, goes on to then produce Jesus. So, you know, God really honours that and does a lot of good work through them, um, which is cool. So from Boaz, we've got son of Salah, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminabad, Aminadab, that's the one, son of Admin, son of Admin is a great name. Could you imagine being called the son of Admin? <laughs> I'll continue. Uh, the son of Ani, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. That's a really important line right there. So we'll go from Judah. So Judah is one of the tribes of Israel. <clears throat> we talked about before how Israel, sort of the Jewish people, known as Israel, is split into tribes. Judah is one of those tribes. So Judah is named after this specific person, Judah. Um, so Judah is one of the tribes. Judah was the son of Jacob. Jacob um, famously wrestled with God. That was his thing. Um, he did a lot of things, but one of the things he did was wrestle with God. Um, and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you give me a blessing. And so God says, okay, I'm going to change your name to Israel. And that's where the name Israel comes from, is it's also 
Jacob's new name. And so if people are from the tribes of Israel, that essentially means the tribes of Jacob. And so people kind of say the two kind of interchangeably sometimes. So that's Jacob, who was the son of Isaac. Now Isaac um, has a really interesting story because Isaac should have been sacrificed and killed. Um, essentially, God said to Abraham, Isaac's dad, um, you have to take this boy onto the mountainside and offer him as a sacrifice to me. Um, and Abraham was like, whoa, really? And God was like, yeah. And so Abraham takes his son, the son who he loves, his only son, you know, his natural biological son, takes him up onto the mountainside, ties him up, has the knife ready in his hands, raises it over his head, and God steps in and says, stop, stop, stop. I know how faithful you are now. I've seen how faithful you are. Um, here is a ram, sacrifice the ram instead, save your son, and through him I'm going to create, you know, countless descendants who will be as many as the stars. And so that's Isaac, so that's a really cool one. And that kind of ties into Jesus, because the idea of sacrifice is kind of in his family tree then. Um, he was the son of Abraham, so we've talked a bit about Abraham, I feel like we've mentioned him quite a lot. He's the father of the Jewish people, essentially. From Abraham, all of the Jews are descended. Um, you know, he is, this is God's chosen people, and they all find their common ancestor in Abraham. And in Matthew's genealogy, the other one that we've been talking about, the family tree stops there. Um, Matthew just traces it back to Abraham because from that point all the Jewish people know who's beyond from Abraham because they were all you know they're all part of that family too they all know that part they're like okay yeah, yeah, yeah it's Terah and Nahor and blah 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 but um, the reason why Luke goes further is for a couple of different things um, possibly is because this is addressed to Theophilus who is a Gentile Gentiles not being from the Jewish faith so but Luke has addressed this book to someone who isn't actually from this family, and so he's like, no, I'm going to trace the whole family because you might not know the rest of this. Um, that's one possible reason. The other possible reason is what we will see when we get to the end of this genealogy, see the person who he chooses to end the genealogy with. Um, so let's keep going. So we've got Abraham, son of Terah, son of Nahor, son of Serug, son of Reu, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Shelah, son of Canaan. So Canaan, sort of when it talks about the land of Canaan, it's referring to this, oh no, it's referring to a previous Canaan, who we'll get to in a bit. Um, son of Arphaxad, I'm going to call my first child Arphaxad, I reckon. Uh, son of Shem, son of Noah. So Noah, um, from Noah's Ark story, um, God saw that the world was becoming really badly corrupt, people were killing each other constantly. Um, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of destruction. The world was basically in chaos. And so God says, I'm going to send my waters to cover this earth. Noah, you're a good lad. You get um, a male and female of each animal. Make an ark for them, put them on that boat. Um, and so Noah and his family and all these animals stayed on this ark for a year. While the earth was flooded, the waters receded. and He went off the ark and from there um, sort of re rebuilt the world. Um, son of Lamech, uh, the son of Methuselah, great name, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahalaliel, nailed it, son of Canaan, that was the Canaan I meant to talk about, it's the name of one of the regions, essentially, uh, son of Enos, son of Seth, it's the son of Adam. So that Adam is the Adam, that is Adam and Eve Adam. There goes an ambulance. That is Adam and Eve Adam. So God created the world, he created the Garden of Eden, he put two people in it, Adam and Eve, this is that Adam. And Adam was the son of God. So that's the reason why Luke has chosen to go further back in his genealogy, is to get back to God. So essentially he's saying, Jesus, son of Joseph, dot, 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 son of God. So he's making that full, full sweep. Um, so yeah, essentially the genealogy of Jesus is there to introduce Jesus to us as being like, look, you look throughout the Bible, you see all these powerful figures, all these powerful stories, people like David, people like Boaz, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you see all these huge figures. These people have all been building up to Jesus. All of these guys that have come before, Noah, you know, um, I've named like all of the important ones that I can come up with. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean, all of these really powerful people, all these huge figures in the Jewish faith, they have all been leading up to this guy. They've all been leading to Jesus, and he can trace his lineage back to God. Um, so yeah, essentially that is the intro we get from Jesus. That is saying, you know, this is the guy who you're going to be reading about for the next few books. He is descendant of all these people. He has completed this family line. That's Jesus. Yeah, so it's cool. 
So tomorrow um, we've got a little bit more, well not tomorrow because tomorrow is Sunday, Monday, we've got a little bit more um, of Jesus before his ministry where he goes into the wilderness which is cool because we saw John in the wilderness, now we're going to see what Jesus does in the wilderness. Um, and then he's going to begin his ministry and we're actually going to get to hear Jesus talking and doing some actual teaching. So I can't wait for that. But in the meantime, stay safe, wash your hands, stay indoors. Um, if you want a Bible, hit me up. I'll give you a Bible. Yeah, peace out. Much love. Bye, bye, bye.